Welcome to TJ's podcast. Oh, we're going to cut it up today, y'all. We're going to cut it up. Don't forget to go uh, fill out that little survey to be an official TJ Fanatico. It's acetj.com slash Fanatico. Not Fanaticos. Fanatico. And uh, we're having a big, uh, well, hopefully it'll be a big shindig this Thursday night. It's Thursday evening, 5 to 7, in the bar, the luxurious bar of the beautiful Hyatt-centric South Park in the South Park area of Charlotte. Beautiful hotel. We'll be in that upstairs bar having fun if you're an official TJ Fanatico. So go fill out that survey and then uh, come hang out with us. My wife will be at the, the little cocktail party. She won't be on this podcast ever. Remember that. Take a hit of that and remember that. Uh, TJ's podcast, uh, Always Sans Jody. <laughs> She's the first person you've banned. Yeah. And she's fine with it. She gets it. She gets it. She goes, I know I'm annoying. Too much of me is annoying. So I get it. I'm like, okay, well, good. No, but that's not why. That's not why. My friend Glenn had a good time being in here the other day, and his wife thought it was funny. So I guess uh, he, you know, he was relieved that he didn't say anything to embarrass her and oh, whatnot. Yeah. Regans, I'm going to ask you a question, and some people might think it's a personal question, but I really don't think it's too personal. When is the last time you have bathed with your father? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was probably when I was a kid. Like how, how young? Well, probably. When, I, I hope it was when you were yeah, a kid. Yeah, I, I don't have But young, any very memory. young. Yeah, I don't know that I have a strong memory mm -hmm. of ever doing that, but I'm sure it happened. Yeah. Um, the reason I'm asking is because of Bradley Cooper being in the news yeah, from the other day. Yeah. He was on um, that, what was his name, Dak Shepard on yeah. his podcast. And it just it just proves my point e even further e each time we have one of these things is that celebrities are just weird people. And because they're rich and famous... They can say these weird things about themselves and people start making excuses for them. People start, oh, well, I mean, maybe that that's okay. And, and, and But he said that, uh, that he always bathed uh, with his dad growing up. Like, he, I guess even after he was older. Really? Um, yeah. Always. <laughs> that's what he said. Um, and then he said that... Um, uh, he doesn't worry about being in the bathroom at the same time as his uh, daughter, Lee, who's six. Quote, we talk when I'm on the toilet. She's in the bathtub. That's sort of the go-to. So she's in the, taking a bath, and he's in the same bathroom taking a shit. And that's pretty normal, it sounds like. He's a, yeah. That's our thing. So... How many other bathrooms are available for him to go yeah. and take a dump in, in his house, in Bradley Cooper's mansion? How many other bathrooms are open for five that? To, five to ten, I would imagine. Yeah. If you're Bradley Cooper. And I don't care. I don't even put that in the same category with taking a shower with your little kid, you know. No, this is another it's, level. Yeah. You just, you're going in there. And, and who's, who's doing what first? Does is the little girl already taking a bath and he's in there supposedly, you know, helping her or whatever? Six though is a little little old, I think, for that. But he just goes in there while she's taking a bath and he sits down and starts talking to her on the toilet while he's taking a dump. That's disgusting. Yeah, it's just yeah. Okay, now he's got the three things that people, you know, the, the three privilege things, right? Uh, in in the in the real privileged world, that make people give provide di different rules for you than than they do other people, normal people. He's got rich, he's got famous, and he's got handsome. Without any any of those three privileges, Riggins, does he get a pass still for taking a dump while his daughter is six and taking a bath in in the same bathroom? 
Rich, handsome. What was the other? It's a uh, rich, famous, famous, and good looking. No, of course not. So if you take away the good looking part of it, so he's just rich and famous. Does he get a pass from uh, people uh, in general for taking a dump in the in the same bathroom where his daughter's taking a bath? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think it hangs on it, the handsome. Yeah, it, it's all. So if he weren't famous. If he were just rich and handsome. Yeah, I think you still get a pass. You still get a pass, okay. There's something about the, well, he's not gross looking. Yeah. So this act isn't gross. Right. I think is what pe- a lot of people would say. But that is but it's disgusting. That is vile. Well, and it's and it's disturbing, more, m- even as much as, as it is disgusting. And what's disturbing is that, okay, let's say that is your thing you go on a podcast and talk about it i mean that's a whole other level like you think like people are going to find this this story like quaint and like Uh charming right it's like no you're taking a shit in front of your little daughter but that's the thing he knows he's got the three privileges and you notice i didn't add race in any of the privileges these are three privileges of you know my uh, theory that it doesn't matter it like if you weren't rich and famous or whatever and you did Yeah. Right. Yeah. If if uh, I don't know, let's say uh, we had a vending machine in here, and the guy that comes in and switches out the food, the the stuff in the vending machine, and restocks it and all, you know, we know him. He comes by once every two weeks or whatever, and he tells us that story. Yeah. That's Nobody's cool. gonna say anything except when he leaves, except that he is just that's just trashy. Yeah. Disgusting. Yeah don't want him around me but you think bradley cooper recognizes that the privileges i don't know that he does because do you know it when you've just lived that's your experience your whole life pretty much yeah maybe not maybe not he might not even see it he might not even get it Hmm. that people are giving him a pass because he's rich famous and handsome see and i i think that the pass needs to be taken away people should be calling him nasty and disgusting well, the other p- bit that was pulled out of that podcast is when he was talking about how his daughter, when he first had his daughter, he was like, you know, would I stand in front of a bullet for this little girl? No. Yeah. You know, it takes time to to build you know, a love bond. your kid. Yeah. It's like, okay, that was weird. I didn't even Again. hear this little excerpt, though. Yeah. Again, if uh, if I say that about my kid. You're a monster. Yeah. Take that kid away from him. Um. So this uh, child psych psychiatrist or let's see what what she is psychologist pediatric psychologist dr wendy lane works at the university of maryland children's hospital said it can actually be beneficial for children to rinse off with their parents during their early years but the practice should stop around the age of five it can be a way it could be a way to learn accurate names for body parts explain the physical difference between uh sexes she said genders what i said sex sexes explain that bodies can change while growing up and teach children about personal boundaries letting children know that the boundaries are their own is important of course um now I didn't know this. No one should be touching their private parts unless providing assistance with toilet. Oh, I didn't even know that part was in the. I guess it wasn't in the interview. She's just throwing this out there as a psychologist, tell, teaching kids that nobody else should be touching their private parts. Okay, I get it now. Um, showering with a child should always stop when the child no longer wants to do it, which usually happens between the ages of three and five okay that's not bad advice yeah using the shower as an opportunity to have like a biology class or anatomy Mm. class is a little odd i think (laughs) and then dax shepherd said that his daughters uh, who are 10 and 9 regularly quote unquote file in to the bathroom to talk during his poopy time oh he's talking about it too yeah my bedroom, the bathroom, and toilet, and bed are all in the same room. 
uh, quote, it's 24 seven, dude. There are no doors. The stairs go up and it's all one floor. Okay. Well, Whatever that means. Hmm. Don't tell me there's no doors. Your bat, your toilet is not in the same room as your bed. Be the ugly. That's not true. But you got to look at it from their perspective. These are peculiar, weirdo people. These celebrities, and that's why I've always tried to instill in, in of course, into my children. But everybody, don't put so much stock in these celebrities and try to. Try to act like that they know better about the world. These are weirdos. And here are two of them that I actually like. I like Bradley Cooper and I like Dak Shepard. I think they're cool guys. I think they're very talented, but that's weird. Yeah, oh, totally. I think what changed is like when you had like the real era of like glamour in Hollywood and like these people that you thought were incredible in, in these movies. It's mm -hmm. really all you ever saw them. You saw them yeah. on like a red carpet and you saw them in the movie. But now, you know, Bradley Cooper, who would have been revered as like a remarkable person, is now sitting on, you know, in somebody's living room on a podcast talking about himself shitting. Mm -hmm. It's like the glamour. With his daughter. Yeah, with his daughter. The glamour and the, the glitz of Hollywood is now completely evaporated. Mm -hmm. And you're hearing our A-list top movie start talking about shitting. Yeah. It's like, it's, and it's, it's gross. It's also part of the having no shame aspect of life for yeah. every, every American. Like these, these Hollywood people, you know, they look at it like, oh, everybody does this. So we can talk about this. This makes me public. relatable. Yeah. It makes me real, yeah, you know, to people. And like, no, it makes you disgusting because I got news for you. Real people day to day, uh, don't have their 10 year old and nine year old, uh, daughters come in and talk while you're taking a dump while their dad's taking a dump that's not normal it's weird you're sicko <laughs> peculiar disgusting yeah that is i don't even want disturbing. i don't even want anybody talking to me through the door no while i'm in the bathroom no conversations period like even on the phone nothing it's I not mean, the time but uh, their their bathroom habits are like prisoners then it's you know, group, cause it's a group affair, right? First of all, do you want your 10 year old seeing you naked or seeing your private parts? Cause they see, do they stay in there for the wiping process and everything? I mean, these are, these are questions that people should be asking, uh, you know, they took her baby. I mean, yeah. What's grosser, a uh, 10-year-old watching you do all that stuff and wiping and stuff, or like the mother that's still like um, breastfeeding a 10-year-old? Which we, every every couple years there's mm. a story that comes out as like yeah. the preteen that's still breastfeeding. Uh, I think the, in, in, the whole bathroom issue. Yeah, I kind of agree. Yeah. I don't know why, but. Can you imagine though? A ten-year-old. Oh, I have to talk to Dad. Well, he's you know, taking a dump. Okay, I, I'll go talk to him while he does that. No. If I could have everybody in, it, just completely leave the house when I have to do that, I would love yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's so weird. Yeah, I like Dak Shepard too, but that is odd behavior. You never went in and talked to your uh, mom while she was in the bathroom when you I were 10? Can't, I can't even imagine. <laughs> well, it says, uh, yeah. yeah it's, it's two daughters, 10 and 9. People found it's, them so charming when, like, Kristen Bell got that, or he got that sloth yeah. for Kristen Bell, and everybody's like, oh, we love them. But I, I don't think that's a good look for them. What, nine and 10 year old daughters sitting in the bathroom yeah, while think, their dad's taking a dump? Yeah, I think that makes me look at them differently. Mm hmm. And trying to advise another parent, like, hey, man, this is, it's 24 7. That's what you do. No, most people don't do that. I would imagine no. most people are not like that. Yeah, I've been a parent uh, 24 7 now for 23 years. 
and um, never has that been the case. And what does that tell your kid? I mean, talk about boundaries that like that yeah. psychologist was talking about, like, where are the boundaries there? I mean, now your 10 year old thinks that's an appropriate behavior to walk into a bathroom while somebody you love is, is using it. <laughs> that is odd. I'm telling you, these people are weird. Yeah. They're not normal. Stop making them be normal just because they're, they're talented. Talent does not equal normal. Talent does not equal uh, hero status. And I'd say they're pretty damn stupid. You should be smart enough to say, oh, no, look, I got to go to the bathroom. Y'all wait for me. I'll be finished in a minute, in a few minutes, and then we can talk. Yeah. Trashy ass celebrities. Now I done got mad. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got more coming up. TJ's podcast. We're here with our old friend, Richard Takato, the Richard Takato Companies. Uh, now, Richard, you just told me something very important that you wanted me to say, uh, but I don't remember what it was, so can you say it for me? <laughs> it was something about numbers and percentages and things that are, yeah, I don't this understand. Is the be- yeah, this is the best way for load officers to keep the majority <laughs> of the revenue that they earn every year, just like a real estate agent. Got it. You know, real estate agents pay what we call a cap in industry. Normally, it's around sixteen to twenty thousand dollars, and then after they pay in their commission to, to reach that for the company, they keep a hundred percent of it. So we're going to do the same thing at Richard Ocado Companies. You, as a loan officer, are going to pay us a cap of sixteen thousand dollars, and everything else you you keep, it, everything else you earn is yours. So, real quick, an example: if you make two hundred thousand dollars in a year, I'm going to take sixteen thousand of it, and then you're going to keep one hundred eighty four. The traditional model that loan officers work on now, they do two hundred thousand dollars in revenue, and they keep about eighty thousand or a hundred thousand. Really? So this is gonna change the game. We're gonna do what other real estate firms have been doing for years, but we're doing it on the mortgage broker side. And this is something mm-hmm. that's not being done it's anywhere. Not, it's totally different. Totally different. Not being done anywhere else. We're also gonna have revenue share. So if you bring loan officers to us, you're gonna make money off you know, you're gonna make yeah. money from a downline just sure. like EXP or Keller Williams. Wow. So it's you you gotta check it out. Just go to workwithrichard.info. It's simple. Work with Richard.info. See if it's for you. Give me a call. Let's have a conversation. Okay. Now you want me to try to say it? Yeah, you say it. <laughs> <laughs> check it out. Work with Richard.info. Hi, I'm Thomas Davis, and let me tell you why I'm a proud member of Team Neogenics. If your nagging pain is keeping you from being active, do something about it. Join the long list of pros and average Joes who have found relief with our stem cell and regenerative therapies. After trying all the others, I decided to try Neogenics. My knees and shoulders haven't felt this good since my college days. If you want to get back in the game, do what I did. Visit Neogenics, where all you have to lose is pain. Our nation's second president, John Adams, always slept on the left side of the bed. He believed this would increase his chances of having positive dreams and a more successful next day. That's why every mattress we sell here at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress includes a left side. And for those that prefer waking up on the right side of the bed, our mattresses come with one of those too. This President's Day, you can save up to $500 on Tempur-Pedic sets. Only at Sweet Dreams Furniture and Mattress. Back to TJ's podcast. (laughs) Hey, fanaticos. Don't forget the uh, TJ and Jody's House podcast is um, going to be posted later today as well, so you can get that. We had a we had a great time in uh, Lincolnton, oh Lincolnton, North Carolina for Small Town Adventures Saturday. We talk a lot about that. Uh, where was that complaint one? If somebody was was mad, Ace was reading earlier. Oh. Was that on the Facebook messages? I think so. Yeah. Okay, we we'll have to we we'll have to get that in a minute. And somebody. Somebody was pissed. And it's not because of what we did in Lincolnton with the little small town adventures thing. It was for what we didn't do in Lincolnton. Sounded like he or she was livid. So we'll have to tackle that. Looks like a lot of people showed up to say hello to you. That oh, was yeah. Nice. Yeah. They were, I mean, I've done gotten so damn famous, Brother Riggins. It's yeah. not even funny. Yeah. Fanaticos popping out of everywhere, following us around. Really? You know, yeah, trying to catch us at the next place and all that. Oh man, 
Oh. Uh, and then Jody and I record our podcast on Sunday afternoons. So you know what that means? What? That I work both days of the week. I never get a day off. Yeah. Never get a day off. But Brother Riggins, mm-hmm. it's so bad. Um. <laughs> but there is a woman who is um, going to upset a bunch of people. I'm sure. Um. She was in the Harry Potter movies. Yeah. And um, I, I never saw the Harry Potter movies because I was an adult when they came out and uh, it started. Uh, Miriam Margulies, is that how you say her name? So. You'd recognize Margolies. her. Margulies. Yeah, I saw the video of her. Yeah, but yeah. I didn't recognize her from anything. Oh, no? No. She's I, like a, a, a bit part actor. I, I had seen her in a couple of different things. I, I don't know. I couldn't name any of them, but I recognized her. And basically what she was saying was that all of these Harry Potter fans that um, they were saying, what do people say to you in public? They recognize you from and, and all of that. And she basically said that they need to grow up. The Harry Potter fans need to grow up because it was for children and Harry people who are still living Harry Potter stuff like it's you know part of their lives. If you're an adult, grow up. Yeah. She goes, I'd, I've see, even seen people with Harry Potter themed weddings and I think grow up like what is your first night of romance going to look like after a harry potter (laughs) wedding like she was kind of didn't hold back i mean she was kind of nasty about it and i'm sure people got pissed yeah people were livid millennials yeah yeah because it's it's mainly millennials right that was a that was part of y'all's childhood growing up and yeah the book the first book came out in like 97 or something like that so i was a kid Mm -hmm. and i loved him i fell in love with the books and never watched the movies but a lot of people only watch the movies. Okay, so which one, um, which group is, would you consider to be more of the, the real fans of it? The book uh, the people book. or the yeah, movie people? The books. Yeah, they yeah. were. I, well, I did go see the first one. I thought, mm-hmm. when you're reading a book, you kind of build out what the, this thing looks like. And she's a great writer, J.K. Yeah. Rowling. Mm-hmm. And she builds out this world. And then you go see it on screen, and you're like, as a kid, I went, oh, no, that's not how I pictured it and it just kind of like ruined the picture but i know a lot of people did both they read the books and watched the movie so do you do you agree with what she said yeah riggins that yeah. people need to grow up if you're still hanging on to harry potter if you're having a harry potter themed wedding yeah. you need to probably grow up same with star wars uh you know what not being a star wars person i don't mm-hmm. know if you maybe if you watched it you fell in love with it as a kid but yeah but par- that's what par- happens yeah, with I mean, harry guess, potter yeah, you fall prob- in love with it as a kid yeah probably yeah. If you have a Star Wars themed wedding, that that really stuck with me. I went, oh, you've even based like the most important day of your life on this mm-hmm. thing that's not related to you. I mean, maybe it is, you know, it's it's not about you anymore. It's about the theme, this other thing, this third yeah. party when it's about, yeah, it just <laughs> seems immature. What about the uh, superhero things? Same thing. The superhero um, on the same maturity level or immaturity level with... Um, with Harry Potter? Um, yeah, I would guess so. I mean, I don't know. I yeah. think so. But I bet, I bet those people it's, lashing out at her are so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it's any wrong, anything wrong to enjoy something that was made for kids as mm-hmm. an adult. Yeah. You can go watch Toy Story now as an adult and think, oh, that was mm-hmm. cute. But you kind of leave it there. You don't yeah. find ways to incorporate it into every day of your life. Yeah, you don't you don't um, seek it. Yeah, you know you don't say, "Oh wow, they're having Toy Story stuff going on at this hotel this weekend in Virginia." I got to go, you know, two states over to see that. I got to be there for Toy Story Con. Yeah, it, some people make it their you know it's their whole identity. Like mm-hmm. I'm the Star Wars guy. Like everything yeah. is revolves around Star Wars. Or Harry Potter, whatever it is. <laughs> and then uh, also this big thing that made the um, made the uh, news was this donut shop that somebody outed them or allegedly um, outed them for allegedly selling a donut that came from Dunkin' Donuts as a uh, as a vegan because yeah. all of their stuff was supposed to be vegan. Yeah. And did they prove for sure, Riggins, that it was from Dunkin' Donuts and it's not vegan? TM, TMZ reported 
that there's now an investigation underway. I did not see that originally. Like this food yeah. blog had posted this picture of this donut that the vegan bakery was selling, and it's yeah, it's got little D sprinkles all over it, which we, we've <laughs> talked we about. Dunkin', yeah, yeah, for the Duncan, and uh, I don't know who is invested because is that a criminal? Yeah, it would be false advertising, I would think, or fraud. Selling something? I, yeah. I got to find out who's investigating, but it for sure isn't vegan. <laughs> and if, <laughs> if that's your whole thing, is you're a vegan bakery and you're selling something from a Dunkin' Donuts, and somebody even did like a test on it to measure gluten or yeah, something. Yeah, it had gluten because it was it, supposed to be gluten free. Yeah, gluten free too. And it was like spiked <laughs> yeah. off the charts for gluten. <laughs> so I don't know what that's about. But then that's when they say it could kill someone. Yeah who's allergic to gluten it could kill them yeah new york state officials uh, now investigating what happened but don't you think it should be pronounced vegan vegan it's a soft g yeah because it's vegetable oh yeah. it's veggies it's vegetarian why is it not vegan yeah it should be it's a good point i think i'm gonna make it be called vegan from now on yeah Exactly like you don't know. That yeah, because it only makes sense. Is this vegan? <laughs> oh, are vegan. you a, are you a vegan or just a regular vegetarian? <laughs> oh, you can't listen to him. He's a dumbass vegan. <laughs> How in the world are you a vegan? How can you be a vegan? <laughs> fat as you are. There are fat vegans though, aren't there? There are yeah. a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of great big fat vegans. Yeah. Because somebody said you don't confuse vegan or vegan with um, healthy eating. Yeah. There's a lot, like if you go in Trader Joe's, a lot of that, most of that stuff is, is vegan, gluten free. It's all like junk food. Yeah. Sugar is completely vegan, isn't it? Just like if you took a spoonful of sugar and ate it, that's vegan. I think so. Did come from an animal. Yeah. No part of it came from an animal. Yeah. Just like honey. Do vegans yeah, eat that? honey since it came from a bee, an insect, instead of an animal? Do they know. do that? I would imagine not. Is honey a vegan product? It can't be. Wow. It's an animal product. If you count bugs as animals, do you? Uh, is, is a bug an animal? Is a bug an animal? Yeah, a <laughs> bug is an animal. Is honey. Uh, hold on, i got to find out. Is a honey vegan? Yeah. Is it really? No, I, I would think it's not. Honey is not vegan. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because it comes out of an animal's ass. Isn't, isn't that where the honey comes from? The bee's asses? They shit it out? <laughs> is honey just... Is it spit or does it come out of your ass? <laughs> is, it, is it just bee shit? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know much about what, bees. What kind of excretion is it? I don't know. They've t bee beekeepers, like urban beekeepers, have overtaken urban chicken farmers. Yeah, no. everybody raises their own bees. Mm -hmm. It's like, could you find a more pain in the ass thing to raise? <laughs> I do love honey, though. Of course, I'm not a vegan, so yeah, I'm not crazy about honey. You don't like it? No. I do. There's when I'm driving home. There's a a guy that run has a lot of beehives, and it's directly across the street from a preschool. And they're all the kids are always outside <laughs> in the playground playing. I'm like, now, all it's going to take is two <laughs> lanes of traffic for those bees to go. You know what? That looks like a nice, fun spot <laughs> right over there. And a million bees get set on your toddler. Are they hives? Or are they the in boxes? those boxes? They're oh yeah, boxes. yeah, yeah. I don't, okay. I don't know what they're called, mm. but he's got a ton of them just out on his property. I'm like one day, those bees are going to get pissed and go attack the, all those kids that are out there. And isn't it scary for the children if he's going out there to harvest some honey and he's got those the big bee suit on? Yeah, I bet it is. <laughs> <laughs> but is like honey that expensive or that? Yeah, it's expensive. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh, so there's a reason that people are yeah. raising their own bees. Yeah, good honey is expensive. But I don't know the difference in gazelle put on there. This was honey made from the what flower and this flower and uh, you know whatever. I just look if it says local honey, then it's going to be. You know, better than the honey that was made somewhere else and put on the grocery store shelf. Yeah. But yeah, it's expensive. You go to a farmer's market and buy honey, it's going to be expensive. Yeah. Mm hmm. Good thing you don't like it. Yeah, I'm not crazy about it. 
Wonder why is that? You I like know. syrup, don't you? I love syrup. I don't, syrup. I don't, when do when when do you use honey? I put it on peanut butter sandwiches sometimes, um, and then I um, I'll just use it um, in cereal. Sometimes I'll put really? it in cereal. Yeah, my friend Mark puts it in his coffee. That's what he uses to sweeten coffee. It's yeah. honey. Yeah. Well, I don't. It's I don't a good do time that. to be a honey lover because they're putting hot honey and honey's on everything. Mm-hmm. They put honey on everything. Yeah, I'm not as big a fan of the hot honey as as you know the the trends are going and stuff. I don't Pizza, like that. Fried chicken, uh, chicken nuggets. Mm-hmm. Honey. Hot honey sauce. Hot honey. They call it uh, some places call it bee sting. You know, like the Hickory Tavern down here, sports bars. They have the honey bee sting wings, and they're good. They're pretty good. But if they if a place doesn't have good uh, buffalo sauce, then I'm just skipping it all together and going with teriyaki. Teriyaki on the wings, yeah. Over just a plain wing. Yeah, a wing with nothing on it. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather have a teriyaki. Barbecue sauce. Teriyaki. Teriyaki. Yeah. Because a lot of places have terrible wing sauce. I know you've said that before. Mm-hmm. So I just skip it all together, skip Riggins. It, skip just it. Skip it and go with the with the uh, with the Japanese wings. <laughs> is teriyaki Japanese? Hey, I, I, or is it Chinese? I think teriyaki is Japanese. Is it? So. Well, why do they have it in the in the Chinese restaurant? Well, that's a good question. Aren't they at war with each other? Chinese restaurants and Japanese restaurants? <laughs> Don't they hate each other? <laughs> it's I, a lot. I, I wanted to find out. I'm not reading that. Not Ace. <laughs> it's just too much. Well, the headline is teriyaki sauce didn't originate in Japan. And this is going to be yeah. some sort of some sort of argument about the origin of teriyaki. Not interested. <laughs> if DJ likes it. That's all that matters. Yeah, and so I'm sure somebody will will write in and tell us yeah. whether it's mainly used. I didn't even ask where it was from and how it originated. Is is it mainly used in Chinese cuisine or Japanese cuisine? Yeah, yeah. I don't care about the history of it. You know what's weird? Whenever you watch like Chinese food mukbangs, which is like very popular on mm-hmm. the internet, I'm always shocked how many people get chicken wings with their Chinese food. Yeah. I. Oh, it seems like every one of them, I'm like, growing up, we never ordered the chicken wings. We had, like, lo mein, mm-hmm. you know, all the general sauce chicken, sesame chicken, that kind of stuff, egg rolls. But everybody gets, like, and then two wings, you know, fried, deep fried chicken wings. Yeah. That's, like, I guess very popular. And they're full-size wings. They don't split, yeah. like, buffalo wings if or If you're ordering like Chinese food, is wings part of it? Uh, Well, it used to be when we would order it when my kids were little because they didn't eat any of the Chinese food, so they would eat wings or oh, whatever were? yeah because oh, really? mm-hmm. there was a lady down here there was i don't know if it's open still uh, but they my wife and my son were pulling away they'd gotten the order picked up and she came running out going chicken wings chicken wings you forgot them <laughs> and it was a big bag of chicken oh, wings. Yeah. yeah they always need salt on them though yeah because they- i think chinese cooking uh they only use soy sauce for, not only but for the most part they use soy sauce in things to give it the salty taste um but i still like a little a little you know aftermarket uh, salt on there a little dusting mm-hmm. it's pretty good yeah it's just regular fried chicken wing yeah I'm, I'm, mm. i was surprised by that and but they're probably like um okay well americans don't care i mean they eat um chicken wings along with pizza so yeah. why not eat it with chinese food yeah and I found out what what Chinese food looks like in the UK. British Chinese food is way different than they serve everything with French fries. Really? Yeah, it's like it's a whole different. If you're expecting like beef lo mein or sesame chicken, you're not getting it in the UK. Like it's totally different. Yeah, UK. It's not a place I look at and go, "Ooh, I would love to try the UK version of this." It just. Yeah, yeah. I think maybe Gordon Ramsay is the only good chef to ever come out of great britain yeah and i've never eaten any of his food so i don't even know if his is good i've never had it Mm -mm. 
I bet I wouldn't like it. You know, like go, ooh, Gordon Ramsay's a great cook. No, I'd probably be like, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm still <laughs> putting salt on it. I bet. Yeah. <laughs> you think that pisses him off? Probably. <laughs> well, he'd just have to be pissed off because yeah. I don't care. Go ahead and we got a in this thing, Riggins. We got a tag: Bradley Cooper, Dax Shepard, Gordon Ramsay. Who are the other else celebrities we've talked about? Because um, I want them to know. I'm mean, not fooling me. Piece of crap. I know what y'all are about. All right, so we'll find that hate message and uh, and go over that coming up next. When it comes to losing weight, sometimes you don't even know where to start. You know that it needs to happen, but you need some help. Well, you start by going to acetj.com slash weight loss and ordering Calitrin. Calitrin is scientifically proven to help you lose weight, and it is not a drug. It is not a drug. Repeat that. So here's what you do. You go to acetj.com slash calitrin, order three months, and then you'll get three months free. Four months, four months free. That's how it works with calitrin. Winter is here, which means you're just going to stay inside and not do anything fun and exciting, right? No, that is wrong, because this year you're going to go to acetj.com slash Gaston and see all of the incredible things that you can do right now in Gaston County. Everything is laid out for you from things to do to restaurants to bars to shopping to unique weekend activities. And we'll get you ready for the spring and the summer with a list of all their great festivals. Find all of this and much more at acetj.com slash Gaston. If you're so frustrated because you're having to run around all the time, you're so busy, you feel like you're not getting your family something great to eat, then you need Culver's. It's the perfect thing for you. Always made to order fresh, hot ingredients all day, every day. And not only do they have the freshest ingredients all day, every day, but they are a part of the community. They're proud to be a part of the Indian Trail community where they're under new ownership. Belmont, University area, Salisbury. Make them a part of your daily routine. Make it your new neighborhood spot. Short waits for the freshest food in town. Get details at acetj.com slash culvers welcome back world to tj's podcast Podcast. i got got so many different things going on i have a hard time keeping up with them so um there's the regular ace and tj show there is um TJ and Jody's house, which will be posted a little bit later. There's this podcast called TJ's Podcast. There's the political show. That's another one. TJ's political show. Uh, is that it? I, they they all start to run together after a while, which is fine. I mean, trying to build a business. Trying to build a business. So um, one of the things that I enjoy most about all of the work stuff that i have to do is a thing called small town adventures tj and jody's small town adventures the way this came about was um every weekend in the um the spring and summer when the weather is warm we go out on the uh on the lake with my little friend jenny and her handsome husband michael but when boating season is over if i may use um boat in that form which i usually don't uh it's just meeting on saturdays and uh going to a place and eating lunch and then maybe going to another place and watching football and you know things like that well my little friend jenny and handsome husband michael eat out every night at a sports bar or a mexican restaurant every night of the week where we live here in mooresville north carolina so my wife Jody had the idea one day that hey let's let's just go on a little adventure on Saturday. So um, you know Michael and Jenny have eaten at all of these places all week around here. Let's just pick a town and go to a different town and go. So that's where the small town adventures thing started because one one weekend we were doing that, I pulled out my phone and started making silly videos and posting them, and then boom, people loved it. And it took off from there. Um, so this weekend, Saturday, we went to Lincolnton, North Carolina for small town adventures. Now, the way it works is we say, all right, we're in Lincolnton, North Carolina today. Where do we need to go? And then, you know, it gets people involved and it's interactive and all of that kind of stuff. So people start sending in their suggestions. 
So we'll go to this place, and then we'll go to the next place. And we say where we are. We're at Lincoln Social. We're at, you know, whatever, um, Court Street Grill, you know, whatever the case may be. You know, promoting local businesses if we're in there, that kind of thing. But we don't have very long while we're there. It's just, you know, several hours to, to eat lunch, to go to these other little places. And we don't get to go to every suggested place that people send in because there are hundreds of these suggestions that come into us. Go to this place, go to that place, go to this place. And remember, we're out of towners. We don't know these places. So we're just going by what people tell us to do. So we got this uh, message on the Facebook. It came in Saturday night. Um, at 9.46 in the p.m. after we had already packed it up for the night and had come back to the home base. And she says, I just want to say shame on you for dismissing Brick Tree Brewing Company in Lincolnton. In 2017, Lincoln was dying. It was asleep. Um, L-E-D-A and Lincolnton towns, town officials recruited the owners of Brick Tree Brewing to come to Lincolnton, and between them and Willie Hefner with Piedmont Properties, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to restore the historic Eureka Cotton Mill in downtown Lincolnton, and then goes through the story of it. Brick Tree is the spot in Lincolnton every night of the week, except Mondays when they're closed, and has been, uh, has been since opening day. It's beautiful, classy, and true representation of Lincolnton. Um, so it goes on and on to, to sing the praises of, of the place. And so you can ask any local public office holder, and they will tell you the regrowth of Lincolnton is 100% due to Brick Tree. And then more of this. Shame, shame on you for not giving Brick Tree the credit it's due and succumbing to the push of a few local people pushing their own agenda to get you to go to their struggling businesses instead of researching and finding the true places to be in Lincolnton. And then starts uh, making, you know, kind of not so nice remarks about other businesses. Um, we just we just went to have a <laughs> look around there was no agenda about promoting any one business and now there would be if any of these businesses would uh, were paying us to be there then that would be an agenda. We got to go to this place and stay for this long and say this about the place and whatnot because they're advertisers. But we don't have advertisers yet. But I tell you what, if you happen to know the people who um, are in charge of that sort of thing, I will gladly, gladly go to Brick Tree Brewing Company in Lincolnton and enjoy everything y'all have to enjoy and i don't doubt any of the stuff that you're saying in your message it's just a little bit uh, um over the top i think a little uh and, and a little bit it sounds a little bit um i don't know entitled you know to be so accusatory about something because we didn't come to that place like, like that place is just entitled for us to go there. I don't know the history of Lincolnton. I don't know w whether it was dying or not. I don't know. It, I did see the place. It's very nice. Very, it looks very nice. Pretty building. Cool logo. I saw it. Uh, but there was, I assure you, ma'am, there was no... Um, agenda to say let's not go there 
let's not let's not do anything with them because we don't want them to have this this and this <laughs> shame on you uh, shame on me shame shame were you supposed to know that like this all took place like I, i'm sure that people said to go there i mean but riggins you you're the one running the social media posts as they're going up and following who's saying what and all that they're they're coming in from everywhere these suggestions it's hundreds yeah and we only have so much time and i'm gonna tell you this if uh there is a place that uh i know for a fact some listeners are waiting there to meet us that's where we're going that's what's going to get priority you know yeah. like we knew that the these ladies were following us and trying to catch up to us and all and when they did yeah, we were going to the car we were we were ready to leave and then they said that they had been looking for us because they just wanted to have one drink with us somewhere and so we just went into the next place with them and then there were other people in there it's like oh you know basically about to have a conniption that is tj you're tj the whole scene oh it's a mob but yeah i mean that's always going to get priority over whatever else you know, when we got, you know, fanaticos waiting. But shame on me? I think not. Possibly shame on you. Yeah. That's not a good, I don't think that's a very good look. Yeah. Well, maybe it was just emotions were high at that time. I mean, we had just, I mean, it was just certain at that point, you know, saturday at 9 46 p.m it was just make finally it was like i i know they're i know they're gone now they're just not even going to come or go to that place how dare they yeah how dare they and not spending the time <laughs> to talk about how great your own business is but to like you know this other place is shit <laughs> it's like a weird <laughs> oh story. i don't know whether this is if she's got any connection to it or not yeah. Oh no! I'm just, just saying. Be, may just be a fan. You mean the one that you're of, a fan of? Yeah. Instead of touting like why this place is somewhere you need to go, it was like, yeah. Let me crap all over the other <laughs> business. And you went to this place? Yeah. Well, they suck. Yeah. I don't know. That's weird. Mm. Do you feel shamed? Um, I feel shamed to the third power. Shame, shame, shame. Well, the city of Lincolnton reposted something. Oh, the, did they? The government paid you. Hmm. What'd they say? Which shame have, shame on me. They said shame on you. You dickhead. <laughs> For not going to the government building. You suck. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, I always tag the, the governments, like the town social media, mm -hmm. and they rarely respond because it's a government social media account. They're not working on the weekends, you know? Yeah. So they rarely, but they, they did. They, they shared one. Mm. Well, good. Yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a great time. Um, but I was so selfish, you know, I didn't realize that that I was being shameful by not working that in there. Um, but I wonder, do they have regular um, regular beer at the at the place? What is it at this place? I yeah. don't know. Because a lot of times breweries. Yeah, because um, not everybody in our party drinks um, craft beers or anything yeah. like that. Just certain things. And oh, I'm sure that's going to be even worse. Now. I should have known. Yeah. Should have known. But we go into a lot of breweries. You know? And like I said, that place looked like it was really cool. We just ran out of time. We had to get back. Is it worth a trip back there to make sure you hit up this place? No. No, it's worth a trip now to not ever go there. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Banned. I'd be scared to go there now. Yeah. Because my wife and I were talking about, and we do this with a lot of these places, say, uh, um, we need to just go back to have, you know, dinner at this place or lunch at that place or, or you know, go to see this place that we didn't get to go to because that's not far from where we live. And um, if that if that comes up, which it did already, 
uh, and it comes up, we need to go to this brewery. I, I would I wouldn't want to because I don't want to get told off when I get in there. You know. Whereas before, I'd say, well, we didn't get to come here last time because we were on the way out and and we just ran out of time. But now that we're here and we had lunch, let's go over and check out that place, Brick Tree or whatever it's called. Mm-hmm. But now I can, I'd be afraid to do it now. Because what if that woman's in there? Hey, there he is. Get him! <laughs> that guy that didn't come last time. <laughs> <laughs> Tie him up. Uh, but listen, so seriously, if, uh, if, if you know the owners of that place, please tell them that we didn't skip them out of some sort of a, a you know, shameful thumb in the eye to them. Because obviously they have somebody here that's a big supporter that thinks that that we did, but please, you tell any owners or owner that we're not like that. Tell somebody who's you know, you know, who's more rational about things. It's a weird thing to that say. If we if we do come in there, then first of all, this you know we wouldn't be coming because we were bullied into it and we we don't want to come in there and be told off if we do come back in there 9 45 on a saturday night <laughs> it's like you know what <laughs> f those people <laughs> let me open my laptop real quick and fire this little <laughs> shame on you, you son of a bitch shame shame and i'm gonna make sure everybody knows your name <laughs> Before I go to bed, I just want to let you know what a piece of shit you are. <laughs> this town would be nothing <laughs> if it weren't for this place. Holy cow. That's wild. It would have already washed into the river. It was dead. It was asleep. <laughs> <laughs> and you just ignored it. <laughs> wow. That is something. <sighs> Would you be scared to go in there now, Regis, uh, no yeah. matter what? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a great place. I, it looked fantastic. Yeah, and sure everybody, awesome. other people in the town said it was great. I would just be more concerned about but the clientele. We, we should, <laughs> I'm not so I don't want this lady to be in there. <laughs> you know, if I walk in and her pull a machete out of her bag or something, and go, you didn't come last time. You know. I don't need we don't often get negative feedback like that no we did one time we were in some town and this uh woman at a business kept messaging you haven't come here yet we close at four if you don't come we're gonna know that you just don't care about small business you know that sort of thing um close at four on a saturday well it's like well yeah extend your hours a little bit <laughs> but that's the closest we've ever come except there was a one guy he was playing around this this week who said oh you don't ever take any of our suggestions anyway so you're on your own in lincoln county but he was later talking with some of the other commenters and all and it was okay. funny but not like this this lady's hurt she's yeah. hurt yeah. she's like i'm just gonna message them <laughs> this <laughs> hateful <laughs> All right. Well, we'll see if we get any other um, any other mean messages from her between now and tomorrow's show to update you on. Are you going to respond to her? No. We should see if this carries anything to her. Okay. Yeah. What am I going to say? Sorry. I'm sorry. And give an explanation. Yeah, just to keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> well, we we'll do that. Why don't well, I'm I? I'm not sorry. Well, yeah. Why don't I troll her? Yeah, that's then. what I'm thinking. Like, at least know. a little something. You know, have to. You know, like, have to be too passive didn't... aggressive, but. Oh, God, we didn't even see your place. And I don't think anybody told us to go there. Because, I mean, there were people telling us to go there. And we did see it because I thought it was a really cool-looking place. You say, wait, are you sure you're in Lincoln? Is it is it next to the TCBY? It's like, no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, is it right there by the Dollar General? <laughs> <laughs> I just, it was a little bit, you know, just to tweak her up a little bit, see if we can get a little more out of her. That might be fun. All right, I'll do that. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, love you. Bye.
Serving the world. It's TJ's podcast.